In the previous video, we have finished implementing our start and end point finding logic so that if we place a house on one side and a special structure on another, our car should be spawned and should travel uh, using a shortest path to reach the end point on the uh, last road prefab. Right now we have a different issue uh, that if we create a road and place three houses on each side of the road and we place one special structure and we spawn cars, all the cars will approach the intersection at the same time and they will collide with each other. And this isn't a great solution, as you can see. So what we will do is we are going to implement a special script for our uh, intersections that will direct the movement to the control which car goes first, which goes second and which goes last for every car that approaches the intersection. So let's go to the scripts folder, let's open the AI and let's create here a new script, right click create new script and we are going to call it smart road. And this script will direct the movement of each car. So let's open it up in Visual Studio. Great. Let's delete the update and start methods. And as I have mentioned previously, this will be a very simple algorithm. We are going to simply use Q. So Q is a first in first out structure. So it works the same as in real life. So first person that gets into the queue will be the first person that is served. So let's create Q. And we are going to create queue of car AI. This will be traffic queue equals new queue. Great. Now we will also need to have access to the current car. So public. And we are going to create car AI reference and let's call it current car. So this will be the car that is currently traveling the intersection. When it is gone, we are going to set another a car from the queue if their queue isn't empty to be the current car and to run uh, so to go through the intersection. Now to make it work we are going to use on trigger events so we are going to add collider soon to this uh, to the intersection uh, prefabs. For now let's create on trigger and we are going to first create enter and this will be triggered if the car collider hits the trigger of the intersection. Now, as you might recall, we have already created colliders for our car, so we will have a, a way to collide with our uh, road objects. So we, what we are going to do is first we are going to check if our other, so this is the collider, dot, uh, let's maybe check for the tag, so dot compare tag, and we are going to find a search for the tag called car. We are going to uh, add this uh, tag to the car objects. And if the object that has collided with our uh, intersection is a car, we are going to access it by var car equals other dot get component. And we are going to access car AI component. Next, we are going to check if our car is not null. So if this is not null and we are going to check if the car is not equal to the current car, so we do not want to enqueue the current car uh, twice. But the car that approaches the intersections might not be going through this intersection because maybe this intersection is the last position of our car. So we are going to also check if car dot is this last index or is this last path index. And we do not have this method, so we will need to implement it. So let's set, let's uh, check if this is equal to false. Okay, so let's alt enter on the on this new method, alt enter and generate this method. Right click on it and go to the definition. All we will want to do is to return here if index for our car is greater or equal to the path dot count minus one. So if the index is equal or greater than the last index on our path, then we are going to return true, else we are going to return false. Let's go back to our smart road script. I have it opened in Visual Studio. Great. And if all of those conditions are met, we are going to enqueue our car. So we are going to call our traffic queue dot enqueue, and we are going to pass the car. And what we want to do as well is simply call our car to stop and let's set it to be true. 
So we have stopped our car when it approaches the intersection. So to make our car run, we are going to create update. And in the update, we are going to check if our current car is equal to null. If it is, we are going to check if our traffic q dot count is greater than zero. Now, if it is, what we can do is we can call current car equals our traffic queue and we are going to dequeue the first uh, car. So dequeue will dequeue the first car that has approached the intersection and was currently waiting for its turn. And what we can call is current car dot stop and we want to set it to be false. So we want to make our car go through the intersection. And last method that we will want to create is on trigger exit. So when the car exits the collider or the trigger of this uh, road prefab of this intersection, again we are going to check if our other dot compare tag, and we are going to check if this is of tag car, if this object has a tag set to be car. If yes, we are going to call var car equals other dot get component, and again we are going to get component of type car AI. And if this is not null, so if car is not null, and here we are going to call remove car, and we are going to pass the car. We do not have this method, so alt enter and generate it. Let's slide down where the method was created. And, he and here we are going to check if our car is equal to current car. Then we know that the current car is leaving the intersection. So what we can do is simply call current car equals null. And then the update method will again dequeue a car if there is a car waiting to be dequeued and then it will make it move. So let's save this. Let's go back to Unity. Great. So what we'll need to do is open our prefabs road and we have three-way and four-way. Those are our intersections. So let's double tap on the three-way and what we want to do is simply add component here. So let's click add component. Let's select box collider. And what we want to do is set it to be trigger and let's click edit collider and let's edit it a bit using those handles let's drag it uh, so the bottom of it is uh, at the level of the street let's make it a bit smaller on the sides so it doesn't collide with other uh, road prefabs okay something like this should be good enough and now we are sure that we have this collider so we can add another component let's type smart road and now we should be good to go. What we can do is we can finish editing this box collider. Let's click those three dots and copy the component. Save the three way and let's open up the street four way. What we can do is click the three uh, street four way uh, main object and uh, click those three dots in one of those components and paste component as new, which will paste our box collider. And what we will need to do is add smart road. So now. Let's control S to save this uh, prefab and let's go back to the scene view using the arrow underneath the hierarchy. As I have said previously, we will need to add a tag to our car. So let's select our prefabs, our car, and let's select the tag and let's add a tag. Let's add a tag called car with capital C, just as you have typed in the script. Let's save it. Let's select car again and let's set its tag to be car. Now, everything should be working so let's press play and let's test it let's create a four-way and we are going to place houses on each of the side and one special structure on at the, the last side i'm going to press spawn a car and now we can see all three cars are being spawned and now if they approach the intersection they stop and they go one after another and simply do not collide now, the issue that we are currently having is that if we spawn a car and if we spawn another car, they will collide with each other. So this is not good. So let's stop the game and let's add to our car prefab and we are going to change the car layer. Let's add the layer. Let's call it car. Okay, select the car again and let's set the layer of the car prefab to be car. Now what we can do is simply shoot a uh, raycast from our car to detect if we are hitting a car, if, if we are hitting a car, we are going to stop our car from going further. So 
To do that, let's double tap on the car, okay? And we are going to right click on the car, create an empty object, and uh, we may want to add a one of the car's prefabs to our car so that we can see what is going on. Let's rename our game object to Raycast starting point. And let's drag it around uh, the front of the car. Okay. And this is it. Let's delete the uh, car prefab that you have used for this because we do not want this. Let's save it. And we have added this Raycast starting point that we will use uh, through a script to shoot a ray in front of the car to see if we are not colliding with anything. So what we can do is go to our top uh, game object car, let's select our car AI, let's click those three dots and let's edit the script. Great. What we can do here is we can create a serialized field to make sure that we can assign our Raycast starting point. So let's create somewhere around here a field serialized field and let's type private game object and let's call it raycast starting point equals now great create another serialized field and let's call it private float and a collision raycast length and let's set it to be something like 0.1 great and somewhere around here we had this stop that has uh, that is stopping our car so what we are going to do is we are going to add above this stop property a private full uh, collision stop equals false and what we can do is add this when we are asking for the property stop get we are going to return stop or we are going to return the collision stop so this will allow us to reuse this property to stop our car whether we want it to be stopped or whether we are colliding or we are detecting the approaching car so that we uh, will collide with it so let's slide down when we have our update method and let's create check for collisions method and we do not have this method so alt enter and generate it and here what we want to do is simply shoot a raycast from our raycast starting point towards the front of the car and detect if there are any collisions. So what we uh, can do is check if physics dot raycast and we are going to pass a, a vector three origin and direction and we are going to check for the collision. So raycast starting point dot transform dot position will be the starting point. The direction will be simply transform dot forward. What we can in addition add here is the length, so collision raycast length. And what we can do is pass the game, uh, the layer, so the car layer. Since this car will have the same layer as another car, we can pass this layer here. To do this, we need to use pitch shift operation, so one and pitch shift to the left. And let's set game object dot layer, since layer is just index of a layer and bit shifting allow us to create a layer mask and our raycast uses a layer mask and not a layer index for it that's why we are using the bit shift operator to create a layer mask from it great and if this is true because raycast returns a bool value if it is true we are going to call our collision stop equals true else we are going to set collision stop equals false and now this will prevent our cars from colliding with each other so let's save it let's go back to unity great if you are still with uh, in the car prefab uh, then we can set our raycast starting point in the car ai script so let's drag our game object to be the raycast starting point let's press play let's recreate the same setup so four way and uh, three houses and one special structure what we can do is spawn a car spawn another car and we should see that they stop and they go one after another through the intersection now it doesn't look very natural but still it is a very simple logic so last thing that we will have to do is to make sure that if we spawn our pedestrians that our cars 
will still interact with the pedestrians that want to cross our uh, intersection, our crosswalks. And that's what we are going to tackle in the next video. Because right now, there will occur collisions between those objects. So, see you in the next video.